For the next coding example, I wanted to discuss a problem from the book. This is actually one of my favorite problems because this is something that we do all the time without thinking about how we do it in our minds. So the problem states to write a program that prompts and reads a double value representing a monetary amount, then determine the fewest number of each bill and coin needed to represent that amount, starting with the highest, assuming that the $10 bill is the maximum size needed. For example, if the value entered is $47.63, then the program should print the following. For Four tens, one five, two dollar bills, two quarters, one dime, zero nickels, and three pennies. The reason why I like this problem so much is because if somebody said they have $47.63, without thinking, we immediately know how many tens are involved, how many fives, how many ones, how many quarters, nickels, dimes. So if you're given this amount, it's pretty simple just to look at and solve. We know that there's four tens. We know that there's one five. We know that there's two ones. There's two quarters. There's one dime. There's zero nickels and three pennies just by looking at this total because we use money so much that we could break this down in our head. But how do we actually do this? Figuring out how we do this in our heads is how we're going to create a program that can actually do this. The way we accomplish this in our head is when we have this amount and we know that we have to break it down, we ask ourselves how many tens go into $47.60? This can be easily accomplished by dividing $47.63 by 10. So 10 goes into $47.63 four times. Then we just subtract the 40 from this, and now we're working with our remainder. Our remainder is $7.63. Now we got to ask ourselves, how many fives go into this? We do the same thing. We take that value, and we divide it by 5, and 5 goes into $7.63 one time. The value of 5 is subtracted from this, and we're left with $2.63. Do the same thing with the 1s. How many times does 1 go into 2? Two? 2 times. Figure out what our remainder is, and now we're left with 63 cents. So, so far, we figured out we need four tens, we need one five, and we need two ones. But we're left with 63 cents. We're actually going to accomplish this the same way. There's no change in the algorithm. The algorithm's the same. So we still have to take our 63 cents and we still have to divide it by the value of a quarter, which is 25. We can move these decimal places over if you wish. So how many times does 25 go into 63? 25 goes into 63 two times. So two times 25 is 50 and we have a remainder of 13. This means that we're going to have two quarters and we're left with 13 cents. We do the same thing with the 13 cents. So 13 divided by 10 for the dimes. So how many times does 10 go into 13? One time. And what's the remainder? Three. How many times does five for the nickels go into three? The answer to that is zero. But how many pennies can go into this? And the answer to that is three. So now we have our totals. We have four ones, one five, two ones, two quarters, one dime, and three pennies. And that's exactly what we got over here, just doing all the math in our head. So what we're gonna have to do in our program is we're gonna have to take our total, we're gonna have to divide it by the values of 10, work down the line, do the same thing with the fives. We're gonna be looking for a remainder. Once we take our value and we subtract the value of 10s, we're gonna look for the remainder and then subtract the values of the fives, of the ones, of the quarters, the nickels, the dimes, and so on. So let's go ahead and start programming this. So I set up my code. I'm calling this program Money Breakdown. So the name of my class matches the name of my file. I have my main method. I have the scanner because we are going to prompt the user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the variables that we're going to ask the user for. So we kind of have to think about this a little bit. So we know for sure that we're going to need a variable for the amount that the user is going to enter. But then we also need the amounts for how many dollar bills, how many $5 bills, how many $10 bills, how many nickels, quarters. We're going to need values for all of those things. And then we're also going to need constants for the actual value of each one of those bills. And the last thing we're going to need is a value that gets passed around from equation to equation so that we can subtract the result of the money that we've factored out from the tens, the fives, the nickels, the quarters, you know, so that we can keep track of the value of the amount as we work it down to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and set up those variables. So I created my constants first, and this is just the values of the bills and the coins. So I have a value for the tens, the fives, the ones, and then I have the values for the quarter, the nickel, the dime, and the penny. Now I'm gonna create the variables that are gonna hold data, the data that we're gonna prompt for the user, the data that we're gonna pass around as we do our calculation, and then the data where we're gonna put the result of how many tens, ones, nickels, quarters, dimes that we have. So I created my variables. I have variables for each bill and coin that we plan to count how many of each we have from the amount the user enters. And then I have two variables to represent the amount that the user enters. The first one is the initial amount. This is going to be the amount we get prompt him for. He's going to enter. And the running amount is going to be the amount that I'm going to work on where I do my calculations. So if you look at my drawing, the running amount would essentially be 47.63, and then it's going to go to 7.63, and then it's going to go to 2.63. So it's going to be the amount that we pass around 
found each equation and perform a calculation on. Now what I want to do is prompt the user for the amount. So I prompted the user for the amount. He's going to enter amount. I'm going to store whatever he enters into the variable amount. And then I'm going to take the value inside of amount and assign that value also to my running amount. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to lose the initial amount that he enters. That way at the very end, I can tell the user, you entered this much money and this is the result. The running amount is going to be what's being reduced every time we do a calculation on it. So I'm going to use the running amount in all the equations below. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the number of tens and then I'm going to output the number of tens. So I went ahead and set up the equation for my tens. So I have the running amount divided by the tens value. Now this is an integer. So when I divide the running amount by the tens value, I'm expecting to get an integer back. However, running amount is a float. So the math is going to occur using floating point values. So if this value is $47.63, I were to divide it by a 10, the value of that would be four point something. Now, if this was an integer, the fractional part of that integer would fall off and I would only get four inside of my tens. And then I can subtract the value of 10 from the running amount and then continue on with my calculation. The other thing I'm doing is I'm outputting the value that the user entered. I'm going to tell them you entered this much money. I'm going to take that to the second decimal place. I'm also going to print out the number of tens. Now I did notice I made a mistake up here. So one of the mistakes that I made is I had like a semicolon right here and I forgot to put a semicolon right there. So I went ahead and fixed that. Now there's an error here because this is a float. So if I try to compile this, you'll see that I'll get an error telling me that there's a loss of precision. And that's because running amount is a float. So I do want to do this division as a float, but I want to cast the result of that division to an int. So this will get rid of all the fractional parts and I'll be left with the four if my value is $47.63. So let's compile and run this program. So I'm getting a prompt, enter monetary amount, and put $47, and make that a little bigger. $47.63, and you can see that I have four $10 bills. Okay, so let's continue to the fives. Before I continue to the five, what I have to do is reduce the values of tens from my running amount. So if I entered $47.63, then I have four tens, so I need to subtract that 40 from the running amount, and then apply the same equation using the fives. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up those calculations. So I went ahead and added my calculation. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically removing the values of the tens from my current running amount. So if I entered $47.63, I'm basically subtracting 40. And I'm doing that so that when I calculate my number of fives, my fives is working on $7.63. So I'm using the same calculation on my fives that I did for my tens, except I'm using the values of fives here and I'm storing the value into my variable that I created for the number of fives. This is working on the $7.63. Now, for debugging purposes, I went ahead and added this line here. This is going to give me an indication of what the result of this calculation is right here, the running amount calculation, when I subtracted the value of tens. And the reason for me wanting to know is I just want to verify that I'm correctly subtracting out the values of 10 and that the fives equation is working on the correct value. So let's go ahead and compile and run this program. So I entered $47.63, and this is my result, and here's my remainder. Now notice that there's this 0, 0, 0, 0001 at the end. This is a problem with using fractional values on computers. So there is an IEEE standard on what's acceptable. So essentially what's going on is Java converted this to binary, performed a math, and then reconverted back to decimal. And then when it went from binary to decimal, it was off by like fractions of a value, and it's not that big of a deal. If your calculations must be precise, there are classes that you can use in Java to handle these types of things. But for what we're doing in this course, we don't have to worry about it. So let's continue. So now that we have this down, I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did for the ones. So I'm going to go ahead and add that code. I added the equation to calculate the ones. It's identical to the fives and the tens except constants and then where I'm storing it. I also did the same thing for the running value, but I had to reduce the value of fives from the running value this time. And it's pretty much simple from this point on. You just follow the same pattern. It's the same equation for quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies. I'm not going to finish this for you, but the equations are exactly the same for the remaining coins. So if I were to compile and run and then enter my value, you can see that I got two ones for my $1 bills. So like I said, this is one of my favorite problems to solve. And the reason is because we do all this in our head, but we don't think about the equations involved. To actually write a program that does it, we have to think about what exactly we're doing.